When I was growing up, there was a point where I realized that my comics that I was reading was not actually colored with colored pencils and paint, it was actually digital art. And this was a big, big moment for me because there was another way to do art than just pen and paper. I was also fortunate enough that my dad uh, already had Photoshop and a old Intuos tablet and I was quickly, quickly picking up how to work in Photoshop and Intuos at just 13 years old. This, to many, is very young and not many people have this privilege, I would say, but in this day and age where digital art is so easy to start doing because the tablets are no longer super expensive and there are free drawing programs on the internet, there is no such thing as industry standards. I will be talking more about that in just a second. First though, I do want to say that this is a review video. I am going to review this XP22 uh, Pro tablet. It is a monitor tablet and XP Pen so kindly sent me another one to review and I thought uh, even though I don't want my channel to be a review channel, talking about industry professional tools and showing a tablet that is not considered like industry standards is a very good way of just showing how you don't need the most expensive Wacom tablet to do your art. Now, I know that I already reviewed the XP Pen 16 Pro, but I thought it would be really cool to review a 22 inch screen because what I've been using at work when I was working for a concept art studio and when I was working from home in Norway, I did have a 22 HD Cintiq. So for me, when it comes to working in a studio and working professionally, a 22 inch screen is very nice to work on because you have so much space. So when I got the package, of course, I'm hit by the size of this thing and I have to find a space on my desk and that's what I do. Now, something that I will say right now is that the connections that come with this tablet is a bit weird. So you do have the normal HDMI that you pretty much get with any tablet, but you also have a VGA and also a DVI port, but you don't get a DVR cable. Now, depending on what kind of computer you have, you might have to get another cable or an adapter. This can be annoying, but you can prepare in the future if you before you get the tablet or order it at the same time with the tablet. But if you do have an HDMI port, that is the best possible option. The tablet comes uh, with a few things that are very, very good. So you get two uh, pens, you get one glove, and you get lots of nibs and a stand for your nibs and for your pen. Uh, of course, you also get chargers for the pen because the, you do have to charge a pen, but for the week that I have been using my 22 inch uh, Pro now, I have not charged my pen once, which means uh, it lasts a long time and usually it's no issue for me to, to charge it if I need it. Now you also get your normal uh, USB cable that goes to your computer that allows you to draw on the screen and you also get your power source, which needs to be plugged in, uh, but that's pretty standard for any kind of screen that we're drawing tablets. Moving on, setting up and starting to draw, the first thing that hits me is the glassiness of the surface. Now, uh, 22 inch Cintiqs don't have this kind of texture, I'm pretty sure. It, it just really threw me off guard because I did not expect it to be so slippy. And I immediately started looking for screen protectors with some sort of matte texture or glare filter or something similar to that. I did find some, it will cost me about 13 to 18 pounds, but if I want it, that is an option. Though, I will say, after a few hours with a drawing into the drawing that you will be seeing in a second, I got very used to the glass surface and I no longer wish to get a screen protector. I think it slowly grew on me and the moment I started getting used to it, I am actually falling in love with it. Now, another thing that I found when I was setting up the drawing tablet was that the cable input on the monitor or the drawing tablet itself is kind of weirdly placed. It's pointing down so that the cables kind of have to bend a little bit backwards to be able to kind of fit between the stands and back through the cables connection to the computer so it kind of bends really weird uh, I don't know if it's okay or if it's going to be okay but I kind of get it if you think about getting a um, 
monet well a stand for the drawing tablet that is a arm so you can move it around freely i might have to get that because i kind of want it but um for just the stand that comes with the tablet it was kind of clunky trying to get to all the inputs and i was also afraid of it kind of just falling out because it's so really uh, angled and kind of puts a little bit of stress on the cables but um, that is just a thing but it hasn't happened like nothing has happened yet nothing has fallen out nothing has broken so for now after a week of use it's still okay I think it'll be all right now with monitor drawing tablets there will always be this issue of different colors showing and the colors not being correct so I was using quite a lot of time trying to figure out what settings on the tablet would be best for showing colors because that's something I work with a lot and I slowly found out what it was I will show a screenshot or a picture here of the settings that I decided to go with I always try to turn the brightness a little bit down because it hurts my eyes if it's too strong and I might have to get the glasses that kind of protect your eyes from the screen because you're so close to the screen drawing directly on it. Now another pro, uh, I will apologize that uh, my pros and cons are kind of not in succession. I'm just kind of talking as I please and going with what I'm saying. So uh, another pro that I did notice the moment I opened it is that it is amazingly skinny and light for the size of the tablet or how I remember my Cintiqs being. So 22 inch is a very big drawing surface and you have all these little mechanisms inside and technology that I don't understand but makes you able to draw on the screen and the tablet itself is actually really skinny and really nice to move around and not as clunky and heavy as I remember when I opened my first 22 HD at age 18 I think and um, yeah to be honest it was just surprising how light and nice it was now you can get the 22e which has buttons on the side now i was sent the 22 just pro and uh, you can get the ones with the buttons when i do have the buttons on the 22 cintiq i do use them but as, as well i have gotten used to using my uh, keyboard to draw especially with a big big screen like this it's nice to have a keyboard to click on when you want to change things and use shortcuts but that is a preference that is completely up to you now let's get into the actual drawing that i want to draw and uh, this is a piece that i just wanted to draw myself and also a drawing that um, xp pen can use if they want as promotion uh using my name of course on it but it's gonna be floating around probably on their websites at some point i just wanted to do something magical and really fun and this is kind of the idea i had where um, it's a cover, a mock cover for a comic that I was planning to do at one point but actually did not. I think it was about two years ago before I actually started Grey Legs at all. And I kind of still want to do that comic but it turned out a little bit longer than I, I was expecting and that's why I probably didn't do it in the end. But maybe one day I can do it and uh, it's pretty much about this girl that looks like Irma. <laughs> and I did do a video about her and her design so I will link that here if you are interested. It's uh, quite an old video and you can hear my shy self talk but uh, it is a video worth watching if you want to see the design of this character. So now, finally, for a few minutes, I will be talking about industry standard tools and why it doesn't really matter. Now, when it comes to drawing or getting a job at a studio, it might matter more because they might require you to have the understanding on how to use Photoshop or tablets or just certain things that they want you to use because that's what they have in their studio and that's what they can provide you with. Now, for most studios, you will find Cintiqs, uh, but also mostly Wacom tablets. Though I don't think it's that different. If you get, if you've been using a normal, well, let's say Huon or XP Pen tablet to draw on at home, I don't think the change to use a Wacom at a studio will be very big for you. I think it will be pretty much the same as I have experienced both with XP Pen and Cintiqs. There are pretty much no difference between Wacom and XP Pen. There's no way that that's going to kind of make you draw differently. Only thing that I can think of is if you're getting a very, very, very cheap drawing tablet that I 
of a brand that I don't even know of, I feel like uh, Wacom XP Pen and Huon is probably the ones that most people know about when it comes to drawing tablets. And it doesn't work, then that will be a problem. And I think studios usually get the secure option, which is Wacom, because they've been around for the longest time, I am pretty sure. And it's just what they've been using for a while since they started doing digital art in a studio. Now that is if you are working in the studio and they already have provided you with a computer, a program, a drawing tablet, you have everything there. Now if you're at home and doing freelance, it really doesn't matter what you're using. Even if some people are saying, well, Wacom's are industry standards, it might not be. Uh, I think Wacom is just the industry norm, I would say. Um, well, something that they always seem to use and seem to have. but. Uh, when like honestly i would probably never have bought a xp pen if it, they didn't have if they hadn't contacted me first and asked if i wanted to do a review the reason i wanted to do the review was because i was curious to see how different and if they were at all bad because that's what i've been hearing from everyone that cheaper budget friendly tablets are worse than wacom and I was just so pleasantly surprised to see that XP Pen and it just it just holds up. Uh, I can do everything that I could do on a Cintiq on an XP Pen. There's no difference. And I might sound biased now that I have this <laughs> tablet, but at least for the monitor tablets, I really, really, really enjoy the XP Pen. Now, I will say that the two options are different. I'm not going to say that they are exactly the same because they aren't. But if a if I got a new studio job somewhere and what they had was an XP pen and some other drawing program that was not Photoshop, I would pretty much learn that program pretty quickly and get used to that tablet because the tablet doesn't um, decide for you how good your art will be and you will not get hired because of your experience with either of the programs. I guess that the only reason, the only thing that might be a good thing to learn is to get the grips on how to use Photoshop because most studios do use Photoshop and um, they might require you to know it. And uh, But I have seen people being hired before where they don't even know Photoshop, but they're so good that they are hired anyway and they learn Photoshop very quickly. And to be honest, Photoshop isn't, Photoshop is it's just more complicated than any other drawing programs. They all have the same layout, the same basis. Some of them are simpler, some of them are more complicated, but they all kind of look the same and it's very easy to kind of get used to either or. When you just work from home, if you want to work in Krita, for example, you just have to be able to export to Photoshop and uh, let your client open the file in Photoshop or any other program that they have. And you can do that very easily. Uh, most programs do have the option to export to Photoshop and you'll be completely fine. Now, what I'm trying to say is that the tools that you use won't make you the best artist ever, that it won't change your art, it, it, like it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you just want to learn digital art, I recommend you get a cheap drawing tablet, no screen to begin with, just to try it out and see if you like digital art and if that is even something you want to pursue. And then the years and years of practice will make you better and will make you improve, but it's not getting a very, very expensive tablet that is going to make a difference. Now, for me, when it came to getting a screen tablet, it did make a difference because people are different. Um, my boyfriend, for example, do not like drawing on the screen. I personally love and I will never go away from drawing on the screen. I will either use my iPad or I will use one of my screen monitors. But for a lot of people, even at um, a studio job, the studio job that I had, most people actually did not use the uh, monitor screens because they were used to drawing on a normal tablet. So just get used to that and, and get the hang of that first. And then if you want to move over to a screen tablet, you can, but you should be able to do the first one first. Now, uh, the reason I like drawing on monitors and, and seeing my hand kind of draw is that it just, it just feels more comfortable. It's like drawing on pen and paper. It is different than drawing on pen and paper, but at the same time, it you can see your hand and you know where everything is. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's comfortable. Uh, but for some people, having their hand in front of their face when they're drawing might be very distracting. So it's completely up to you. But if you are a new 
artist and you want to learn digital art, get a cheap drawing tablet first, see if you like digital art, and then if you feel like the tool itself is stopping you from creating good art, uh, then maybe look into getting a more expensive one. But yeah, now especially <laughs> if you do want to move up to a uh, drawing monitor like I have, the options are a lot better than when I wanted to get a drawing monitor. Now, the first time I realized that you could draw on the screen was in uh, high school and they actually had a very, very, very old Wacom screen monitor. I'll put a picture here because it's kind of funny how old and clunky it was. Nobody had the cables, so I had to go around the whole school trying to find cables that would fit so I could try it. And I was just so excited to try it and I loved it when I started doing it. And the moment after that, I started saving up and I think I saved up for two years before I could afford buying a 22 HD Cintiq that cost me about 1300 and 1300 pounds to buy and that is a lot of money for a 18 year old uh, student to get but I managed it in the end which might be a privilege very big privilege but I did get to that point which is very very nice now if you wanted to get a 22 HD um, Cintiq that today it will cost you about 14,000 pounds that is not touched that is the equivalent to the one I'm using now the XP Pen I'm using is the XP Pen 22 Pro uh, it's not the 22e so it's without the buttons and it costs about 400 pounds and the one with the buttons cost about 500 pounds now 400 pounds is the same uh, price as the 16 Pro that I reviewed the other month and I think that is because of the tools and the the, the buttons uh, but if you had the to the option to choose between big and small that kind of depends on if you want to travel around with your tablet because having a big tablet is a big thing um, you'll have to have it stationary with a stationary computer now if you have a little laptop it might be better to get a smaller smaller size and I'm pretty sure XP pen have smaller um, size screen tablets that also cost less so the price of these and the quality of these really match up to the Wacom. In, on my part, personally, I really like them. And um, I would probably never buy an expensive Wacom again because these XP pens suit my needs, even though they're different. And I I personally don't like realize the difference that much. So to me, they are great. Also, if you're drawing at home and you want to get an industry professional tool, you can just get whatever you want because it just depends on the art. I just said that, I know. But I just wanted to mention that again because it really does mean a lot that you can do the same art than anyone else with a Wacom, Wacom can. Uh, you can do it on a, another type of drawing tablet. That is it for this video. I'm so sorry for rambling on. It might be very disjointed and not make a lot of sense, but I hope that you understand my importance, what I'm saying, that you don't need the professional industry tools to do amazing art. You can just get whatever you think is necessary. I'm just happy that the quality is good. It might have just not been a good quality product, but it really is. So this is what I have to say. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me rambling a bit. And I hope you enjoyed the art. I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, I did stream the whole process. So if you want to come join me up on uh, Twitch, you can do that. There's a link in the description. I'll also put the link to the tablet that I'm using, the XP Pen 22. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope that you have a wonderful week and at least enjoy the art if you didn't like to talk so thank you guys so much for listening and i'll see you guys later bye bye